Hello and welcome to Piano Pandemic Activities. For today, I'd like to start a new little series. I thought about calling this Things I Wish Piano Teachers Knew, uh, but I decided not to call it that. And instead, what I really mean is stuff I wish someone had told me when I was 18 or 15. How about things I wish someone had told me when I was young, okay, concerning the piano. So uh, we'll run through a few uh, issues that I think are important for young musicians. Something to think about during the pandemic. Uh, and so for today, the topic is, I wish I had known that improvisation is more important than memorization. Now I know that will step on some toes and uh, perhaps even uh, prompt some people to cry heresy. I realize that. But I've come to believe this is true from the point of view of the practical working life of someone who wants to be a professional in music. That improvisation, faking, generally being able to come up with stuff on the spot on your instrument is more important than being able to memorize pieces of music. And so let me defend that statement because I think it does need defense. First of all, where does memorization come from and why do we have this strange world in which pianists are expected to memorize their solo music and their concertos, not chamber music and not accompanying, uh, but other instrumentalists typically don't. Violinists and, you know, uh, cellists and so on playing recitals and concertos uh, typically play from music. There's a complicated history to this, and it partly comes out of pragmatism, and it partly comes out of ideology. The practical side of it is that um, in the 19th century, as the piano itself changed and became a more powerful instrument and the action got faster, a lot of composers devoted their attention to it and wrote difficult virtuosic music for the keyboard. Uh, of course, that happened to other instruments as well, but, for example, Beethoven, Liszt, Chopin, Rachmaninoff, all of these important musicians dedicated a lot of their attention to the piano, much more so than the English horn or the tuba, for example. There's no Rachmaninoff concerto for tuba. <laughs> There's a thought. Um, and, and so with this virtuosic music came the problem of uh, I don't have time to look at all the places I need to look on the instrument and look and get information from a page. Now, if someone is playing an exceedingly difficult piece on the clarinet, you never need to look at the clarinet to play it because your hands are just on the keys. They can feel where they're supposed to be. And a lot of it is, you know, embouchure and controlling the reed and all of that. And you don't actually have to look at anything to play that instrument. Uh, you don't have to go find your place on the clarinet. When I was a kid, my brother brought home a clarinet from school and, and played it in, in school, and it had all these keys up and down, and I sort of imagined that your hands had to climb up and down the body of the instrument, finding which key. I always imagined, you know, it was sort of like a, just like a, a cylindrical piano, you know, you have to find. And I, I was very surprised to realize, no, you just put your hands in one place and you can do everything. Same with the saxophone. Same with the oboe. Uh, and I thought, well, that's not fair. So it just became a, a necessity to memorize at the piano. Further, a lot of the virtuosic music of the piano, one is going to repeat it so many times that by the time you actually can play it, you're, you're going to have it memorized anyway. Um, you know, for those of you who've played Chopin etudes, you know, you kind of don't have to work that much at memorizing it, because if you're going to play the winter wind, by the time you can play it, you can't stop thinking about it. So on, on the one hand, it's, it's practical. On the other hand, you know, the piano concert occupied a very central place in the romantic idea of the musician. Uh, of course, you know, violin and other instruments as well, but the piano, particularly in the person of Franz Liszt, embodied the idea of the artist who's coming on stage inspired. And so the idea that you would just be reading off a page um, to get your information, that didn't really fit with this romantic idea of being inspired and playing from the heart. And so um, 
it just seemed to fit with the ideology of Romanticism more. And in fact, it's very interesting that we call memorization playing by heart. Isn't it interesting that we call it that? Not by mind or by intellect. We call it playing by heart. And that's connected to this idea that if it's memorized, it's more expressive, it's more authentic. Okay. So there are complicated streams that contributed to, to piano memorization. Um, then you get to the 20th century and we establish all these music schools and ABRSM and Guild and, you know, standards. And of course, one of the things that gets institutionalized is you have to memorize. Uh, and then, of course, that becomes part of entrance auditions. Um, you must play a prelude and fugue and a classical sonata and a romantic piece, and they must all be memorized. And it becomes a test of your uh, proficiency as a musician to memorize. So that's, that's really where it comes from. Then lastly, it just becomes an expected standard. It's a way that you prove that you are legitimate. So a number of years ago, a long time ago, when I was a student at University of Maryland, they, they had a wonderful piano competition there, the William Capel competition, and they would bring in very famous guest artists. And one of them was Menachem Pressler, extremely well-known pianist. And Pressler came and played his recital from the score. And I remember what he played. First half he played the Chopin Preludes, uh, complete, and the second half he did um, maybe something else, and then Gaspard de la Nuit by Ravel, from the score. And uh, he was the subject of a lot of derision among the students there. You know, um, you know, this is a major international competition. How dare you come uh, so unprepared? And people criticized his, his playing of this music. It didn't have the freedom and inspiration. And, you know, maybe it was a little cautious. Um, and probably the reason he did that is he's getting older and he knows he's fallible. So, um, anyway, I saw that um, he had offended the culture by not playing from memory. It's very interesting. Um, so that's where it comes from. Now, the reason I would say mem uh, improvisation is more important. I'm not saying memorization has no role and is never important. For example, it's completely practical and necessary even in chamber music and accompanying where one has a complex, difficult passage or an awkward page turn. Most of us have memorized chunks of chamber music and collaborative work just because we had to. Didn't have time to look up and scan the page for information. Uh, and indeed, it does, certainly it helps us inhabit our, our pieces. Uh, so, you know, I would probably not play big major solo works uh, from the score. I've, I've rarely seen that go well. I, I, I knew a guy, he, he did the Hammer Clavier from the score. It was one of the worst concerts I've ever been to. Um, I once tried to do part of the Franck Prelude, Chorale, and Fugue from the score, and it was very uncomfortable. So yes, there's a role, and, and yes, there's a reason most people play big virtuoso pieces from the score, and I, I would continue it f for that. However, the reason I think improvisation is more important is once you're done with music school, most graduates of music school do not have a compelling reason to play large amounts of music from memory once they're done with school. That won't be a big part of your life, and it certainly won't be an important part of how you make a living. Okay? Uh, I think through my many, many, many graduates that I've taught, and I can't think of any of them for whom playing from memory puts bread on the table. For, for many of them, playing from the score, yes. Teaching, yes. Arranging, you know, all this other stuff, yes. But not playing from memory. Uh, however, they could have plenty of reason to improvise, to jam, and to fake. Um, for example, even when one is uh, accompanying and, and um, you know, the music falls off the rack, or the wind blows, or the page turner messes up, if you can improvise and fake, you can save the day. If you cannot, you cannot save the day. Uh, so even just that one simple example. Uh, the other reason I, I think that improvisation is, is, is a better use of one's time is I think of the amount of time it takes to memorize securely a large work. Uh, the first stage, of course, you know, we learn it and we can play it. And then think of how much time it takes to play from memory, let's say, a Mozart sonata. The extra time you have to put in 
in order to play it from memory. What else could you have done with that time? Um, and of course, the, the idea that by memorizing it, you are actually understanding it and getting all this insight into it, I think is not necessarily true. One of the dark secrets of music is that you can memorize long pieces and not understand them at all. Um, and that's just because the way motor memory works. It's just whatever we do by repetition becomes something that we can recall physically. It doesn't mean we actually understand what's going on. But when you improvise, you're required to interact with the materials of music because you have to make decisions about the materials of music when you improvise. Whether it's blues or jazz or popular music or historic or classical music, you have to make decisions about how to assemble that piece of music and therefore you have to understand how music is made. If someone works in a fast food restaurant and, and they just have this formula, you know, you take a scoop of something from this bin and a scoop of something here and a scoop of something here and then you hit the button on the microwave and then you serve it. You don't actually understand anything about food by assembling that. But when you have to cook from scratch, chop the ingredients yourself and measure them and decide how much salt and pepper, now you have to make decisions about the materials of food, the ingredients of food, and you end up understanding them. I think it's a very interesting question. Have you ever seen a rock and roll guitarist stop in the middle and have no idea what to do next? <laughs> it's jamming away, being awesome, being epic, and suddenly they just have no clue what they're supposed to do. You really don't see that. Um, at any kind of, you know, medium amateur level and up. Yeah, maybe some kids or something, but not even like pathetic uh, dad weekend warriors uh, my age, they still know how to play their stuff. That's because they have to interact with the materials of music. What chord is it? Uh, what is the riff? How does the riff go? They have to, they really have to learn what that is. Uh, have you ever seen a jazz pianist just stop in the middle and they have no idea what to do? Of course not. But you see it in classical music all the time. They come to a grinding halt because they don't know how the music works. And I think this is profoundly sad. So memorization is valuable, but when I consider the investment of time and, frankly, the risk of long-term emotional trauma for someone who's you know, having memory mistakes on the stage, uh, I think it provides less of a return on investment than improvisation. So I actually don't require my students who are not performance majors to memorize everything when they play publicly. They can do their senior recitals and do a lot of it from the score just because I don't believe it's in their long-term interest to invest that time. I know that's heretical and I'm fully prepared for the barrage of withering comments that is to come. I will enjoy it. Um, improvisation, by the way, does make you a better memorizer because it de demystifies the way that music is made. So a, a couple of, of further points here. One thing I have noticed is that um, sometimes people criticize the idea that maybe memorization is not so important simply because they're defending an old order uh, that is their world. So you might hear it from a piano professor. Um, well, their whole world would change if, if we treated improvisation as important and memorization as one skill but not the be-all and end-all. So I've, been, I've, I've received some criticism from, from that. Uh, another is that many established musicians have no idea how they would ever begin to memorize, or sorry, how they would ever begin to improvise and so they don't want to be open to maybe changing priorities in the music world. I think that's too bad because it is truly in the interest of our students that they learn to improvise. Whether that is jazz, whether that's in popular style, whether that's in a historic style, they will be better off as musicians if they can improvise. So I'm going to just toss that out there. If you want to argue with me in the comments, I welcome that. I won't get mad. I won't be hurt. You can do that. If you are interested in what I teach, 
in improvisation. Check the links below. I've also included some other resources from colleagues and friends of mine. So anyway, that's our piano pandemictivity for today. Improvisation is more important than memorization. Ha 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 ha.